Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 4 of creating a space shooter with Godot. So we have our gameplay scene with an instance of our player, and we can drag as many of these player scenes in as, as we want if we wanted to have multiple players in our game. Obviously that's not what we want to do, so let me just delete those. But we want to make sure we can get this player to move around using the keyboard. Now our game is going to support keyboard, mouse, touchscreen, and controls, but we're just going to focus on keyboard for the time being. So the first thing we need to do is define some input actions. So I'll go to the project menu at the top and go to project settings. And under the input map tab, we can go ahead and add all the different inputs that we're going to have to our game. So we're going to have an action to make us move up. We'll make one to make us move down, one to make us move left, one to make us move right, and then an action to actually shoot in the case of keyboard controls. And you'll see all these actions down here. Again, we're only focusing on the keyboard for right now, so under the Move Up action, I'll click the plus button, I'll add a new key, and I'm going to use WASD controls. You could use arrow keys if you want. So my W key is to move up. I'll go to the Move Down action and add a key. That'll be the S key. Move left, I'll add a key. That'll be the A key for me. You could also just do the left arrow key, whatever your preference is. I'll add a key to the Move Right action. That'll be my D key. And then the Shoot action, I'm going to make the space bar for right now. So we just defined these actions that will be triggered when the corresponding key, whichever one you assign to it, is pressed. Great. So we can go ahead and close this. We now have a way to get input. Next we're going to go into our player. Here's our player scene. And I'm going to click on the root node, this area 2D, which is our player, and I'm going to click this script button to attach a new script to it. We can leave all the defaults as it is, and I'm just going to save it in my player folder and name it player.gd and we can go ahead and create that script. So you'll notice that the script icon appears next to our player, and if you click that, you'll be brought directly to your script in the editor. And you'll also notice that the script automatically extends area 2D. And basically with GDScript, every script file is automatically an unnamed class. It's just every script is a class. So we're saying, hey, we are extending an area 2D because we are attached to an area 2D node. You'll see that the type of this node is area 2D. And we do that, that way we can access all the properties of area 2D, such as its position and everything like that. Next, I'm going to delete all the starting code that it gave us, and we can start from here. The first thing we're going to need is the speed that we want our player to move at. So I'm going to create a variable called speed, and then you could just set this equal to anything. We can change this later. Let's say 100 for now. Now you could type it like this, and this is completely valid, and if you want to do this, you can. However, I prefer to specify the types of all my variables. So I'm going to type a colon after the word speed and say that this variable is a float variable. It's a decimal number. Again, you can leave it untyped, but I prefer to specify all the types of my variables. Next, we're going to need a vector2. If you're unfamiliar with a vector2, just see my episode on Godot basics for that. It's just a container for an x and a y value for our velocity. So we'll say var vel for velocity is going to equal a vector 2. And we're going to start it out with 0, x, and 0, y. We don't want our player to start off moving at all. And I'm using this colon equals here, which is the same thing as above, except Godot actually infers what type I want it to be based on what I assign it to first. So this variable is a vector 2. If this velocity's x component goes negative, it means we should be moving to the left by however much it says. If it's positive, we know we should be moving right. If the y component is negative, it means we should be moving up, and if it's positive, it means we should be moving down. So let's start writing this movement code. Now, we have two options here. We could put the movement code in the underscore process function, or we could put it in the underscore physics process function. Now, I do have a video in Godot Basics that briefly discusses the difference between the two, and I'm going to tell you right now, it really doesn't matter for a game like this whether we use process or physics process. They're both going to run many, many times a second, but the general consensus is that you do any movement and such in your physics process function, and then things that are slightly less time sensitive, you would put in your process function. Now we're actually going to change this code soon after we write it, but let's go ahead and get writing. We're going to say if our left button is being pressed, so if input dot is action pressed, meaning the current action is being enabled, and we'll select our move left action that we defined in the input mapping in our project. If that's being pressed, in my case, the A button, then we have to set the x component of our velocity 
equal to negative whatever our speed is. Else, if input dot is action pressed, and we are pressing the move right action, in my case the D key on my keyboard, then we want to set the x velocity, our horizontal velocity, to positive speed that we will, will move to the right. And we're going to do the same thing for up and down. So I'm actually going to copy this if else statement right below it, and we'll say if the move up action is being pressed, then we want to set the y component of our velocity to negative speed. Else if the move down action is being pressed, we'll set the y component of our velocity to positive speed. So we're basically setting this vector2 velocity based on our keyboard inputs. So after we set our velocities here, we're going to change the position of our player. And we're going to do that by saying position plus equals, so we're going to add something to the current position of this area 2D, this player node. We're going to add whatever our velocity is. But remember, we have to multiply this by delta to get it into terms of per second. So this speed up here means we want to move 100 pixels per second. So we have to multiply by delta, and that'll convert the speed into per second. Now, if we go ahead, and you'll notice that our player is still in our game scene here, we'll run the game, and when we press your arrow keys or your WASD keys, your player will move. Except, you'll notice that the player will never stop. So that's one issue, and there's also another issue. And that issue is a little harder to see. We'll go back into the player script, and the reason why our player was never stopping is because the instant that we pressed one of the keys, our velocity was set, but then it never gets reset to zero. So to fix that issue, at the top, we can just go ahead and set vel.x equal to zero and vel.y equal to zero. That way every time it restarts, it gets reset to zero and then gets set if a key is currently being pressed. So if we run this, you'll see that it now looks, or rather works, a little bit more better than expected. There's still an issue here though. Look at how fast my player moves to the left. Now look at how fast he moves when I move diagonally. It moves way faster diagonally. And that makes sense, because we're moving in speed in the x direction and speed in the y direction at the same time whenever you're going diagonally. So that's effectively going to add up to be a little bit more than the actual speed that you set. So how can we fix that? We're actually going to use another vector to fix this. At the top of physics process, I'm actually going to delete where we set our velocity to zero. And instead, I'm going to type a variable called dirvec. This is going to stand for direction vector. And this is just going to be a vector 2 that is also going to start out with x and y equal to 0. And this vector is only going to store either negative 1, 0, or 1 for each component. Now if our move left action is being pressed, instead of setting the velocity, we're going to set the x component of our direction vector to negative 1, indicating we want to move left. Else if move right is pressed, we're going to set the direction vector dot x equal to positive 1, meaning we want to move right. We'll do the same for up and down. Instead of the velocity, we'll set direction vector dot y equal to negative 1 to move up, or direction vector dot y equal to positive 1 to move down. Okay, so how can we use this direction vector? Now, I'm not going to fully explain vector math here. But basically, right before we move, right before we change our position, we are going to set our velocity vector equal to our direction vector dot normalized multiplied by the speed of our player. Now what dot normalize does on a vector is it makes sure the vector length is 1. If you want an additional explanation on this, feel free to check out the next video. It's just an optional video where I'll just quickly explain why this works. So once we have this, we can now go ahead and run our game and we see that we can still move fine up, down, left, and right. But when we move diagonally, we move at the same speed as we should be. We don't move faster going diagonally. And that's exactly what we want. So, perfect. Now I want to experiment with my speed. So if we go to the player scene here, we can actually create a variable in our script that will appear in the inspector. That way we can change it using this GUI rather than typing the code. And sometimes it's kind of cool to do that. So if we go into our player script, we can actually type the word export in front of our speed variable. What that'll do is if you click on your player node in the editor, is it'll put that speed variable right here in the inspector with whatever value we set it to, and we can change it right here. 
That way we don't have to go into the script and change it. So if I wanted to try out a faster speed for my player, let's say 300 pixels per second, I can just edit it there, save it and run it, and we'll see my player now moves much, much faster. I think I'll leave that at around 200 pixels per second for now. And that's all because we typed the word export in front of this variable, meaning it's available in the editor. So that's just a cool little trick that you can do with Godot. Alright, great. We have our player moving. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode.